Very end of the end now. We are looking on top of the, the cliff bit there, the top of the bank. It's got those rods with the rails through them or the wire through them. I'm not going to go up there and line it up. See, I went up there once when I was doing a steam train and I got up there okay, but it was a bit of a difficult job to get back down again. But from there, looking along the seawall, 1965. Here you go. just up there that's the uh, post I was on about from a different angle in that first photo earlier on I'll just flash it up again not this I'm doing from memory it's about this building here which is I'm sure you know used to be the boxing club at one point but it's the one point I want to talk about so that used to be a cinema back in the day believe it or not and uh, it, that was closed down by 1938 and it was a derelict building then. Then it was used for storing the deck chairs, etc., for the council. After that, they decided they wanted to turn it into a boxing club. So here it is, it's a derelict building storing the deck chair things with a sign on it trying to raise money to turn it into a boxing club up there. So that would have been pre-1970 because they got it in 1970 and then in 1973 they opened after a nine, raising £9,000. Here's a picture of it as the boxing club in 73. You might notice the Venturers Youth Club sign down in that alleyway over there in the picture used to be the youth club when I was younger but anyway what happened in 1973 was on the 29th of November which means 50 years ago bar three days to the day I'm filming this Henry Cooper came down to open it here's a signed photo of Henry Cooper he gave at the time and here's a picture of the plaque which is now residing in Tynmouth Museum. So there we go. A deep dive into the history of that building. Cinema, deck chair store, boxing club, majestic travel. And now the Tynmouth hub. Lovely. Good old Devon Arms, free house. Just up the road, Northumberland Place, where Norman ran past in one of the film, one of the clips of the film, Laura Wall Gallery. Over there, our local artist, and Nine Northumberland Place. Should we go another then and now? Okay. Well, this isn't from ages and ages ago. I think it's from about 2016, but I'll put some details on the picture. There we go, that was it when it was the number nine bistro. Thought it was the Indian restaurant. And before that it was a hotel. I said this is uh, then and now. Well I've found the same picture now. I'm not saying it's exactly here and it is a painting, but you see that stone there that's got the 51 on it? Well that almost fits into the picture. Anyway, oil painting, so you've got a train coming along there. It was a king class, apparently, with a bell on it. So there we go, can't give you an exact date on that because it's an oil painting rather than a photo. But I think you can get the gist of where it was. I don't like that one, so to speak. However, one turned up from 1965 and it's got two recognisable buildings in the background I hope to line up if I can and we'll take it from there well, I can't seem to line it up exactly what we're looking at though side of that house there ahead of us and you see the dentist right up there that's in it as well and it's basically all the buildings that are along here 
in 1965. Here you go. I say the dentist is the key to it. 1965 Station Goods Yard. Lovely bridge. It's not the original though. About 2018 they changed it and it was all out in the car park there and all lifted into place. But I wasn't doing the filming at the time so I haven't got any shots of that. Over there in the distance is the top of um, Alexander Terrace where we walk along when we go to Poly Steps. I was going to pull out, there we go, and keep that in mind for the photo because you'll see it. And this is before Poly Steps, this is 1962, and there's a Tidmouth Angling Society here on the beach. So that's 1962, long before Poly Steps came into existence and the docks were nowhere near as built up as they are now. In order to imagine we're there, here's a picture. I think it's 1978. I'll put some details on it because I haven't got the details to hand. But it's a train coming through Parsons, but I've got the exact date and the type of train and all the details with it. I'll put that on the photo. Here you go. Right, so that was up there, past this tunnel, bottom of Smugglers, 1978. Lovely. Wouldn't it be nice though, if that fence wasn't there and it was more like it is at the seawall where it just stopped at the ES Fabs. Well in 1965 it was just like that indeed. Keep an eye out on the uh, white house up behind me, up, up in front of me there. You'll see that in the picture, 1965. Here you go, no railings. So there we go, that house is visible in it. Wouldn't it be nice not to have the railings, much better views. Anyway, let's crack on. Now you'll have heard me talk about the fact that before Liddles and before the co-op and all of this was there, and it was a car park, it was Brook Hill School, which I went to. And when they demolished it, I think in 75, but you'll know that in a minute, we all went up to the uh, Hazeldown, which was our new school. And it was opened by none other than Ronnie Corbett. And um, I remember sitting in the assembly hall and listening to him come in and do his jokes. I didn't quite understand all of them, but the adults seemed to find them funny. And he turned up in a big Rolls Royce, I remember that. So here's a newspaper article all about it, which you can pause and read about Ronnie Corbett opening Hazeldown. Here you go. You probably all remember the Norman Wisdom film, Press for Time, 1966, featured a bit on the channel. Here's a behind the scenes, taken about here, where he was doing the bit just before the bus comes down, Ivy Lane, and ploughs into the sea. Here we go, behind the scenes shot. And also in the Norman Wisdom film, there's a sequence where the bus comes down here, past the flagpole, goes into the sea. Haven't actually recreated that yet, I will do it in the future. Excuse me. Um, I say, I, 
I'm, I'm really most awfully sorry, but that wasn't my bike after all. <laughs> <laughs> shows this wall here before it was all built up now as you know I often shoot the seafront from here but as I was saying this is the seafront from here roughly about here 1964 there you go obviously a bit of a different beach you can see further along there where the wall was slightly different area but that was about there anyway how about 1965 1965 looking this way keep in mind the take a peep booth there and take in mind St Michael's Church and the top of this roof here here we go 1965 As I say, so much stays the same, well so much changes. As for then and now's today, I found a strip of photos, three of them, from 1957, when it was snowing in Timoth. So um, I'm going to flash up the strip of pictures now, briefly, in the middle of the screen while I'm talking. And then we're going to find each one individually and film it individually. Okay, so here's the first of the three. I'm going to try and recreate. Looking up here, not a great deal has changed to be fair. That building there is prominent in both of them. Here we go, 1957 snow. Chilly, chilly, chilly. Right, let's crack on. Right, here's the next one, not a million miles from where I just took that one. See the Ladbrokes building there? See so about that will come into it. Looking down here, same day, 1957. Even got the tree, both photos in the present day and in 1957. Here you go. Now I'm sure regular viewers will know that this little rectangular area here used to be a sunken garden with a wishing well in it until the um, early 70s when they redid all the seafronts. But here's the, the third and final picture of the snow from 1957. Roughly about here. Here you go. Right, so that was the sunken garden and the snow in the last of the three photographs that we're doing today. Um, I have done that garden before on the channel. So if you search for it, you should find it with a few more pictures. All good. Right, let's crack on.